Hello everyone. Welcome to Career Date and this is session 4 on cognizant problem solving. So I have included previous three sessions linked in description. If you haven't watched the video, please have a look at it. At this session also we are going to discuss some of the important repetitively asked cognizant questions. So this session is also going to be definitely helpful for you. Don't skip any part. Now here you have the first question. What is the unit digit in 87 par 87? So this question is based on cyclicity, right? So what is a cyclicity? Now, if you take seven, so what is seven power one? So seven power one, the last digit is seven, right? So seven square is 49. So last digit is nine. Seven cube is 343. So last digit is three. Seven power four, the last digit will be one because 343 into seven. You don't need to com completely multiply this. So seven into three is 21. So last digit is one, carry is two. You don't want to bother about carry. So last digit will be one. Now, if you take seven power five, again, it will be seven into one. The last digit will be seven, right? So again, the cyclicity will continue. That means seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine, three, one. So for every four times, the same number will repeat, right? So the seven, nine, three, one will repeat for every four times. Right now, we can see cyclicity of the number seven is four. Now you have 87 power 87. So, what is the last digit here? It is seven, right? So, at seven power, you have 87. So, we know for every four times the same number repeat, right? So, what we can do at the power, we have 87, right? So, you can divide this power by four. So, what is 87 by four? So, it is two times eight and it is one time four. So remainder, you have three. So always you have to look at the remainder, right? So what is the remainder here? So the remainder is three. So if the remainder is three, you have to look below three, right? So it is seven power three. So you have to consider that seven power three. So if the remainder is two, you have to consider seven power two. If the remainder is three, you have to consider seven power three. So what is seven power three? The last digit will be three, right? So answer for this question, that is 87 power 87 will be three, right? So the last digit will be three. So this becomes your answer. So answer for this question is option E. See, we have different cyclicity for different numbers, right? So we can uh, classify this. Uh, we totally have 10 digits, right? So from zero to nine, we have 10 digits. We can uh, classify these 10 numbers into three categories, right? So I give a detailed explanation. So we have already discussed this uh, finding unit digit when the number raised in power in one of our sessions, right? So I have included the link in description. If you haven't watched, you can have a look at it at the uh, description, right? Right? So I have given the link in description. Now moving to second question. What is the value of 1.5 to the base 3 plus log 6 to the base 3? Right. So log 1.5 to the base 3 plus log 6 to the base 3. So this is purely based on properties of logarithm. Right. So you can write log 1.5 as 3 by 2. So 3 by 2 to the base 3 plus log 6 can be written as log 2 into 3 to the base 3. Now, this is in the format of log a by b. So if you have log a by b format, you can write it as log a minus log b, right? Now here you can write it as log 3 to the base 3 minus log 2 to the base 3. Now look at this, you have log a into b structure, right? So 2 into 3 is nothing but a into b structure. You can write it as log a plus log b. Right, so you can write it as plus log two plus log three. So to the base you have three. Right now you have minus two and plus log two. This can be cancelled. Now what you have is log three to the base three plus log three to the base three. Now what is log three to the base three? We know log a to the base a is one. So log three to the base three is also one. So here also it is one. So it is nothing but one plus one. So what is one plus one? So it is two. So answer for this question is two. This becomes our answer, right? Okay, now moving to third question. Rizwan goes to market once every 32 days and Sabir goes to same market once in every 36 days. They meet each other one day. How many days later will they meet again? Okay, so we know this question is based on common intersection. That means we have to find the LCM of 32 and 36. So how to find LCM of 32 and 36? So forget the L, L division method. So we can write 32 as 2 power 5. And 36 can be written as 9 into 4. So what is 9? 3 square. And what is 4? 2 square. 
So to find LCM, we have to write the common factors. So what we have, so we have three and two. So to the power of three, we have two. And what is the maximum power of two we have? Five, right? So it is three square into two power five. So what is three square? It is nine and two power five is 32. So 32 into nine. So this becomes our answer. So two nines are 18 one, three nines are 27. So it is 288. So LCM for 32 and 36 is 288 and this becomes our answer, right? So after 288 days, Rizwan and Sabir will once again meet each other. This becomes our answer. Okay, now moving to next question. Find the value of A. So 0 0.007 by A equal to 0 0.01. So how can we solve this? So this is a normal search and indices question. So you can take this A to right hand side. So you get A equal to uh, 0 0.007 divided by 0 0.01. So you can multiply both numerator and denominator by 1000 because in numerator you have 0 0.007, right? So you can multiply both numerator and denominator by 1000. So you get 7 by, what is 0 0.01 into 1000? You get 10, right? So you have to be very accurate in multiplying uh, the zeros with decimal, right? So you have two decimals. I mean, two numbers after a decimal and you have three zeros. So after one, you will get only one zero, right? Okay, now what is seven by 10? We know it is 0 0.7, this becomes our answer. So this kind of questions are very popular in cognition, okay? So we can go to next question now. What is the remainder when 67 plus 67 plus 67 is divided by 68? So how can we solve this? So whenever you divide a number, Right. So you will get two type of remainder. First one is a positive remainder and second one is a negative remainder. For example, if you divide four by five, right? So definitely you can't divide four by five because four is a smaller number. So you can say uh, zero into five is zero. So the remainder is four, right? So what is the remainder? So the remainder is four. Or, so this is positive remainder or you can write a negative remainder. So four and five. So one into five is five. So four minus five is minus one. So this is negative remainder. So when you divide a number by another number, you will get a positive remainder and negative remainder. So here you have a question 67 plus 67 plus 67. Plus 67, you have to divide it by 68. Now first we try to divide the 67 by 68, right? So first we divide the 67 by 68. Now, when you divide the 67 by 68, what will be the negative remainder? So it is one into 68 is 68. So the negative remainder will be minus one. So you will get minus one when you divide the 67 by 68, but you have to divide uh, the 67 for how many times? 67 times, right? Because 67 into 67 into 67 into 67 up to 67 times, you have to multiply the 67. So how many minus one you will get? So you will get 67 minus ones because when you divide one 67 by 68, you will get only one minus one. So when you divide it by 67 times, you, you will get 61 minus one, right? Okay, now again, you have another 67, right? So when you divide this 67 by 68, here also you get minus one, right? Okay, so you have to divide this by 68. Okay, now when you add this remainder minus one with minus one, you get minus two. So minus two is the negative remainder, right? So minus one is the remainder when you divide the 67 plus 67 by 68 and this minus one is the remainder when you divide the 67 by 68. Now you have minus one plus 67 that is nothing but minus one plus minus one. So minus one plus minus one is minus two. So this is the negative remainder but you have to write the remainder in positive always right. So how to convert a negative remainder to positive remainder. Okay we know four by five is minus one. So this is negative remainder, right? So you have to convert it to positive. How to convert it? So you have five here. Five minus one is what? Four. So this is your positive remainder. Similarly, so here you have 68, right? So what is 68 minus two? You get 66, right? So 66 is the positive remainder. So if you want to convert negative remainder to positive remainder, you have to add the number, right? So you have to add the number by which you are dividing, right? So here you are dividing by 68, so you have to add it. So this becomes your answer. So that is 66 is the remainder when you divide 67 plus 67 plus 67 by 68. So this question is little tricky. So you have to, uh, you have to be more conscious on this kind of questions, okay? So we go to next question now. 
Yes, so this question is based on uh, time, speed and distance, trains, right? So a train runs at a speed of 42 meters per second. So what is speed of the train? It is 42 meter per second. And it takes 35 seconds to cross a tunnel. So the time taken by the train to cross the tunnel is 35 seconds. Okay, now we don't know what is length of the train as well as length of the tunnel. So we can keep length of the train as L. And length of the tunnel, we can keep it as T. Now, this is the total distance, right? So time equal to distance by speed. So the total distance here is length of the train plus length of the tunnel. Now, what is speed of the train? It is 30, I mean, 42 meter per second. And what is the time taken by trying to cross the tunnel? It is 35 seconds. So 35 equal to L plus T by 42. Now, you can easily find a length of the tunnel plus, uh, what is that? Train, right? So 35 into 42, how much we get? So 2 into 5, 10, it is 6 plus 20, 26, 27, 2, it is 1470. So length of the train plus tunnel's length is 1470. Next, after traveling some distance, it takes 15 seconds to cross the pole. So the same train takes 15 seconds to cross the pole, right? So what is speed of the train? It is 42 meter per second. That is clearly given here. And the same train takes 15 seconds to cross the pole. Right, so here length of the train is accountable. We don't have any length for pole, right? Okay, with this, you can find length of the train. So length of the train is nothing but 15 into 42 now. So it is 420 plus 210. I think you get 630, right? So 630 is nothing but length of the train. So you have 630, please don't choose that because they're asking length of the tunnel. So here the total length of train plus tunnel is 1470 and we know length of the train is 630 just subtract it so what you get is 840 so this becomes your answer so 840 is nothing but length of the tunnel right so we shall go to next question now a cylinder is half filled and holds 30 liters of water what fraction of cylinder is full if it contains 36 liters of water okay imagine you have a cylinder like this and it holds 30 liters that means half filled so when it is half filled Okay, when it is half filled, it is 30 liters. Right, so when the cylinder is filled with 30 liters of water, then we can, we can say it is half filled. Now, if it is 30 liters, when, when the cylinder is half filled, if it is 30 liters, when it is full filled, it will be 30 plus 30, 60 liters, right? So total uh, quantity of the cylinder is 60 liters. Now, our question is what fraction of the cylinder is full if it contains 36 liters of water? So out of 60, if 36 liters is filled, it is what portion? So it is what fraction? So in sixth table, it is six times, it is 10 times. So six by 10 is nothing but three by five. So we can say the cylinder is three by five filled when it is filled with 36 liters of water. I hope you understood, right? So we go to next question now. Write 0 0.7777. So it's a recurring number as a fraction. So if you want to convert the recurring number to fraction, we have a uh, protocol. So you can take this number as A or any number, right? So you can take it as A equal to 0 0.77777, so on. Now here, how many numbers are repeating? Only one number is repeating, right? So what is that? Seven. So if one number is repeating, to find the fraction, to find the equivalent fraction, you have to multiply with 10. Right, so only one number is repeating, right? So you have to multiply both left hand side and right hand side with 10. If two numbers repeats, for example, 0 0.71717171. So here two numbers are repeating, right? That means you have to multiply with 100, right? So if it uh, if three numbers repeats like 643, 643, 643, then you have to multiply with three, I mean, thousand, right? So here you have to multiply with 10. So 10 into a, 10 a equal to 0 0.7777 into 10, you get 7.7777. Now, subtract it. So if you subtract, you get 9a equivalent to 7.0, that is 7. So a equal to 7 by 9. So this becomes your answer. So option B is the answer. So 7 by 9 is nothing but 0 0.7777. Right. So if you have 0 0.888888, that is nothing but 8 by 9. 0 0.55555 is 5 by 9. Right. So 0 0.222 is 2 by 9. Right. So if you have two numbers repeated, then you have to divide that by 99. For example, if you have 0 0.313131, uh, 31, so on. Right. So that will be 31 by 99. 
right? So for that, if you go with traditional method, you have to multiply by 100. That is 100A equal to 31.313131. So that will be 99A equal to 31. So A will be equal to 31 by 99, right? So it's a start kit. Okay, so we go to next question now. Two cakes of equal size are divided into four parts and six parts respectively. Dharma ate three slices of first cake and Vivek ate three pieces of second cake. Who ate more and what fraction? Okay, now we have two cakes. Okay, so cake number one and cake number two. We cut the first cake into four equal pieces and second cake into six equal pieces like this. Now, Dharma ate three slices of the first cake. So out of four, Dharma ate three slices. That means 75 percentage he ate, right? So this is three pieces out of four. So he ate 75 percentage. Now, if you take Vivek, he ate three pieces, right? So he ate three pieces out of six. That means he ate 50 percentage. Now, who ate more and what fraction? <coughs> so Dharma ate 75 percent and Vivek ate 50 percent. So Dharma ate 25 percentage high comparing to Vivek. So what is 25 percent? One by four. So we can say Dharma ate one by fourth of the cake higher comparing to Vivek, right? So this type of questions are little logical. So hope this helps, right? Okay. So that's it for this session, and I hope definitely this session would have helped you. So if you feel this session is uh, helpful to you, please share it to your friends. And if you follow some other different methodologies, you can put it in comment session. And I wish you really all the very best to crack your cognizant exam, like the video and thank you for your patience. Have a nice day.